All right. Okay. So now we're live on YouTube. Can get started. Oh, you made them yourself. Oh, that's fun. <clears throat> hey. Sorry, my cats are doing something bad. Okay, check out this sweet battle. Oh, they were just fighting. It was truly epic. But, um... You can kind of tell that they're kind of in that stance where, like, they could... Oh, there... Yeah! <laughs> yeah. What do you say? Should we should we take bets? <laughs> oh, it's not. It's it it's cutting out. Oh, bummer. Could um, watch it on YouTube, I suppose. <laughs> oh, and they're gone. Okay, maybe that's a sign that we can get started. Let's just see um, how many people are on YouTube. Okay, just two people on YouTube so far. Um, and just a handful of people here. You know what, uh, let's just get started. And um, if anyone misses the class, and it's on it's on YouTube, it's gonna be archived, so not too concerned about that. Um, okay, uh, we are going to start graphing some pretty interesting looking functions today. It's, uh, it's gonna be pretty, pretty fun. Um, so uh, let's, yeah, let's just jump right into it. Um, so just trying to think of which one we should start off with. How about, yeah, let's do this one here. Let's do, Okay, we're gonna follow this example pretty closely. We're gonna we're gonna be working on page three seventy two. So if if you want to follow along, you can. You obviously don't have to. I'm gonna be working on it in front of you as we speak. But um, uh, yeah, we'll uh, if if you want to. I mean, the nice thing about having the page number two is that if if there's one thing that you didn't understand, um, like if you're looking back on this, especially if if you're not. Oops, if you're not on. Um, Discord right now and, and, and you're not uh, and you're watching the video when it's archived and you can't actually ask a question live You could always go back and sort of read through it and they do a pretty good job of, of explaining their thinking. So um, This is page page 372. Okay, so we're gonna graph uh, this function. So we are going to graph and like really all I'm doing is I'm taking the, the, the question and then I'm gonna do it myself. I'm not gonna follow their steps exactly. So we're gonna graph the function, what is it? f of x, f of x equals the absolute value of negative x squared plus two x plus two x plus eight. Okay, so that's, that's what we're gonna be graphing. And, and why don't we take a look at um, at what this function just looks like. So, I mean, when it comes to learning this stuff, I I have no problem just flat out like cheating and um, just seeing what Desmos does. Like, let's just get Desmos to graph this thing and we'll see what happens and, and then we'll figure out how to do it ourselves. So, let's see here, I've got, um, uh, oh yeah, here it is, right here. Okay, so we've got F, oh, does my keyboard not work now? Come on. Yeah, totally. Come on. Well, I guess, is it because I'm not, oh yeah, here it is, uh -huh. Um, Just the focus was on uh, the notebook, not the decimals. Okay, so we got f of x equals, uh, the absolute value of negative x squared uh, plus 2x plus 8. Okay, oops, and then we've got, we're going to close that. Okay, so look at that funny shape. And we we kind of looked at this a little bit yesterday. Um, like if I were to have this, 
a value I'm gonna I'm gonna add a slider for a and I move this thing up and down you can kind of see what's going on here right I mean it's not I mean it's not completely ambiguous like we can kind of see what's going on here because we have a quadratic but the thing is when the quadratic here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna do control oops I'm gonna do control a control C and then control V oh no it doesn't let me paste okay anyways I'll, I'll, I'll write it again I'll do G of X equals um, negative X squared plus 2x plus a okay and maybe what I'll do is I'll just say that this is the absolute value g of x okay what's wrong with this which symbol the blank symbol huh Come on, more technical difficulties. Can you believe it? Uh, I mean, I did this yesterday, right? Anyways, the whole idea here is that we have a parabola, right? So let's let's just get out of there. So we've got this parabola. Um, so here's here's my my uh, my coordinate plane, and let's say I've got this nice looking parabola like this. But the problem is, some of the parabola is negative, right? We've got some negative values. So what happens is when we take the absolute value of it, those, those values don't stay negative. They become positive. So what happens is we get this little reflection like this. And then this is what our absolute value function looks like. So our process, the process that we have for graphing these things is to graph the function without the absolute value signs and anything that is below the x-axis where the values would be negative what we're gonna do is just reflect it so reflect it so then it it kind of bounces uh, as if you're kind of like throwing it on the ground and then it bounces back up right okay so let's go ahead and do that um, so I'm going to get rid of all this and I'm gonna to have to write this in um, a different form because I want to graph it so let's write this in vertex form vertex form so let's complete the square. So I'm going to do negative uh, x squared plus 2x plus 8. And I want to, uh, well, what do I want to do? I'm, I'm going to complete the square. So this is equal to, well, I'm going to divide that 2 in half. Or no, I'm going to factor out a negative 1. So let me factor out that negative 1 first. So I've got negative 1 times, um, that will be x squared minus 2x plus 8. Okay. Then I've got uh, this is equal to negative 1 times x squared minus 2x. So I, I divide 2 by, by, by 2. So I take half of negative 2, that's negative 1. And then I add, or then I, I square that. So I've got plus 1. And then I subtract that again. And then I add 8. So we did this quite a bit about, uh, what was that, a month ago? Maybe less than a month ago. So just continuing on with this, negative 1 times x, and I'm going to, now this is a, a nice little perfect square, so I'll put this in brackets. This is going to be x minus 1 squared, and then I've got plus 7, and then I will distribute this. So I've got negative 1 times x minus 1 squared minus 7. So there is my parabola. It has a stretch factor of negative 1, which means it's just a regular parabola, but it's upside down. And its vertex, our vertex, our vertex is at the point uh, one negative seven, and it. Uh, wait, that's not right, is it? What's going on here? Um, I think I must have made a mistake here. Ah, uh, yes, there it is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that should be a negative. Yeah, that should be a negative. Otherwise, it'd be kind of a boring question, to be honest. So we'd have, this is going to be, uh, now this becomes negative 9. And then uh, that becomes positive 9. 
So every every mistake that I made, I, I corrected in pink. So if, if you have to go and correct your notes, like if you're taking notes along with me, then just go back and look at the pink text. And that's, uh, okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. Because if it was, if the, the vertex was in, in the negative portion, um, and it was also pointing down, then there, there wouldn't be any interesting sort of reflections or anything like that. Okay, so the vertex is at one nine, and then the stretch is negative one, right? The stretch factor is negative one. So it's a regularly shaped parabola, it's just upside down. So let's go ahead and graph this function. Now remember that this is not what f of x is, right? This is not f of x right f of x is the absolute value of that so let's let's go ahead and call this g of x okay just so we can be clear that this is not the function we're graphing this is just a function that has a lot in common with the function that we want to graph so uh, i'm going to graph g of x so here's my little parabola and it'll look something like this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just to save space, I'm gonna say that these little ticks are worth two each. So this is two, four, six, eight, ten. And same with these, right? This is gonna be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, etc. And we're gonna have some over here too. Negative two, negative four, negative six. And this will be negative two, negative four, negative six. Okay, cool. So let's let's first of all graph the vertex. The vertex is at one nine. So I've got one nine, that's right there. And uh, the shape of this is, well, I go uh, uh, over one, down one, over two, down four. So that's one, two, three, four, over three, down nine. So one, two, three, uh, and I guess nine will just be right there. And then I will just mirror this. I'll do this on the other side. There you have it. So a parabola, I'm gonna just really zoom in here to make it nice and smooth so it looks really good. So a parabola, it's gonna look something like this. Okay. All right. And then it keeps on going down like that. Now, here's the problem. The problem is that this parabola has some negative bits, right? So, so this is a problem. The problem is that we have some negative bits, okay? But we don't have to, right? Because because we get to graph this the way that it's supposed to be graphed. Remember, this is this is g of x, right? This whole thing is g of x. G of x is allowed to go negative, right? This function that we decided to call g of x which is not the absolute value, it's, it's just a regular parabola, it is allowed to go negative. But we are asked to graph f of x, which is the absolute value of this. So really what we're gonna do is we are going to, um, we're going to go something like this, like that. And there you have it. You don't have to get super precise about it. Um, that looks pretty much good enough for me. Um, just the point is, is that instead of going down below, we're bouncing back up. So this right here is g of x. And of course, g of x still includes this portion of the parabola as well, um, but not the negative bits. Oh, sorry, this is not g of x, this is f of x. This is the function we actually wanted to, to, uh, to graph. So that's, uh, that's f of x, so, so that's pretty much it. And just to make things less confusing, I'm gonna erase this bottom bit right here, okay? And we don't need this anymore. So there you have it. There is our graph of f of x. So yeah, and that looks, that looks pretty much the same as what, uh, what they have in the book here, so I'm, I'm pleased with that. Um, and they give us several ways of, uh, of doing this. So let's see. I'm going to get you to do this function here. Okay, so now it's your turn to try this. So you try. Um, so I'm going to get you to graph. Uh, let's see here. f of x equals the absolute value of x 
squared minus x minus 2. x squared minus x minus 2. Oops, it's a little too tall. There we go. Okay, x squared minus x minus 2. So give that one a shot. Um, I'm going to give you, how about four minutes to do that one? So we'll give you four minutes starting now. So go ahead and try to graph that one. Can you guys hear that? It's like a parade on my street. Yeah, it's very strange. Let's see if I can show you. Hold on a second. Okay, time's up, but uh, check this out. It's ridiculous. We miss you. Who, miss who?
does that say extrain extraneous it, it, what this is bizarre Oh yeah? Kima does not approve. She's very concerned. <laughs> I don't I don't understand what the what they're Who do they miss? Like me? I just don't understand what their deal is, like are they protesting, or are they celebrating, or commiserating? I just don't get it. Huh. I miss you. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry that this is kind of hijacked the class, but like, there's no way that this would be not distracting. I know. This is so weird. I just wish that their message was more clear. Like, I don't have any concern with protesters or anything like that. I think there's lots to protest. But I just don't understand what they mean by I miss you. I just, I literally don't understand what, what their message is. It, it look, it kind of looks like a party though. Like, they got party balloons. Like, they literally have party balloons. Yeah. Oh. We miss you, Earl Grey. Oh, maybe it's a, uh, like we miss the school. Maybe it's for, maybe it's for me. Maybe they actually do miss me. I mean, not that I'm an Earl Grey teacher, but. Yeah, I, I had a, I had a job interview at Earl Grey, actually. Um, I, I interviewed for this job and, well, the grade seven job and Earl Grey at the same time. Bizarro. Okay. Yeah, probably. Anyway, oh, I've made a huge mess of my desk now. Look. Yes, it is. That's how I use my. Cause like my, my other. Um, well, first of all, my other headphone jack on my actual like my motherboard on my PC is broken. It doesn't work. But even if it did work, I'd have to go like all the way back there, and like getting. A headphone jack back there doesn't really doesn't make sense so the nice thing about Xbox controller is that it's got this little little headphone thingy so wait the switch doesn't have a headphone jack oh right but not on not on the pro controller mm. well it's too bad. Do they, can you at least use a Bluetooth uh, headset? Really? So just no headphones for like when you're on your TV? Just impossible? Wait, how could you do that though? Like what if your, what if your TV is like far away from you? Yeah, that's too bad. It is. I really like this feature because, like, it's you know, then you, yeah, it's nice. Um, I also have a DualShock Four controller, but um, uh, but I, I I lent it to my friend so that we could play so we could play video games together online. Um, uh, no, I don't. I don't have a console. I just I just have my PC. Um, but a PC can use all sorts of controllers, um, which is kind of nice. Uh, okay, sorry about that distraction. I, there's just no way I was gonna, you know, not say it was. It was that's quite quite the ordeal. Anyway, um, okay, uh, so let's let's go ahead and solve this one. And I think uh, I think we'll we'll end it a little early today. You know, it's it's Friday and uh, it's been a long week, so uh, we'll we'll end it a little bit early. I uh, I have some errands to run as well, so I've got to I've got to jet out of here. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm starting to uh, I'm, t I'm starting to smell you from here actually. Uh, <laughs> just, just, just kidding, just kidding. I wonder. I think that uh, this probably makes no sense if you're on if you're on YouTube because you can't hear everyone else. <laughs> but uh, 
for those on for those on YouTube, uh, we're making fun of uh, we're making fun of someone. Um, okay, uh, so let's let's actually just graph. So we're gonna start by graphing um, just. I'm, I'm going to say g of x, which is equal to x squared minus x minus 2. And then we'll convert that into vertex form, right? So this is this is equal to, well, x. So I'm going to cut that in half, square it. So plus a quarter, plus a quarter, minus a quarter. And that's going to be x minus uh, x squared minus x plus a quarter, minus a quarter minus two, right? And uh, so that's what g of x is equal to. And uh, I can factor this. So this is uh, x squared, or sorry, x, what is it? x minus a half squared. And that's all, uh, what is that? Minus eight, nine half, nine quarters. Okay, um, are we good up to this point? Did, did, did anyone do anything different than me or? Are we good? Take that as a yes. Um, okay, uh, next up, uh, well now we have our, our vertex. So, so our stretch factor is one. So there's really no stretch factor. And our vertex, our vertex is at uh, one half and negative nine quarters. That's the vertex. And let's graph this thing. So there we go. And the vertex is one half and negative nine quarters. So negative nine quarters is like two and a quarter. So one, two and a quarter. It's like right here. So and these this time the ticks are just just one, one to one ticks. There we go. So one, two, three, four, etc. One, two, three, four, five. Negative one, negative two, negative three, etc. Okay, and the stretch factor is one. So I go over one and up one. I go over two and up four. So one, two, three, four, and then uh, and then I mirror that, and then that looks good enough for me. So I'll graph it in a different color so you can kind of see what's happening. So this is the function g of x. Okay. Um, it's kind of our dummy function, and our um, and I think that the x and y in, the, the the x intercepts are actually right there. So we'll just put them there. Uh, then we have um, well f of x. We want we want f of x. So f of x. Well, we have no problems over here, right? This is still this is still positive, but with f of x, the issue is is in the middle here. So here we're going to have to mirror this. So we're going to go up to about right there. So instead of having the vertex at a one half and negative nine quarters, this is the point one half and positive nine quarters. Okay, and then we have this nice little bump like that. So it kind of looks more like a W than it did before. And and then that's it. Um, so. For the exit slip today, this is what I'm going to get you to do. There's a few other parts to the, the question that's in the, in the book. I'm just going to get you to, to answer those. So for the book, I want you to tell me, or from the book, I want you to tell me, um, let me just write exit slip. Okay, uh, I'm going to get you to um, find the x and y intercepts. x and y intercepts. I want you to find um, the domain and the range. And uh, they ask us to express it as a piecewise function, but we're not there yet. So this is what I want you to do for the exit slip. So tell me the x and y intercepts of this. I want you to find the domain and the range. And that's it. So um, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign out now so uh, so I have some time to, to run my errand before I pick my wife up from work and uh, I'll talk to you guys on on Monday so um, uh, yeah hopefully your assignment will be marked by the end of the weekend um, I 
uh, I've got a lot of marking to do. I've, I've got assignments in all my classes, so um, I've got a big stack of marking. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll be finished it by the end of the, the weekend. Um, in any case, I will see you guys on Monday. Oh yeah, what's up? Yeah, just, just on this one. So the x and y intercepts of this function uh, that we just graphed, this, this function right here. So you can kind of see the x and y, yeah, you can see the x and y intercepts uh, here. Let me find a different color, how about purple? Here's the x intercepts, there's the y intercepts, but you have to find them, right? I mean, I just graphed them. They, it might be close to two, but it might not be two, you know what I mean? So tell me the x and y intercepts, solve that with algebra, and then tell me the domain and the range of the absolute value function. So just to be clear, I'm not talking about the original function g that we found. Um, I'm talking about the absolute value function. So, so find the x and y intercepts, the domain, and the range of the function that we were just working with. Okay. All right. So yeah, have a good weekend, guys. I'll talk to you guys on Monday. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, you too.